Check this shit out. Here's an odd one, The Trolls in Crazy Land, an NES game that was only released in Europe and Australia. I actually don't know how wide a release the PAL games received, as some titles like Mr. Gimmick were only released in Scandinavia, but according to this label, my copy was at least sold in Italy. Cool. I like to call this Trolls in Bootyland, because damn, that ass. Will it work on my North American top loader? Mmm, yes. Let's troll it up. The Trolls in Crazy Land is one of those rare reskin games, like how Mario 2 was a redesign of Doki Doki Panic. Oddly enough, the Famicom game that Trolls is reworking had a similar title, Doki Doki Uinchi Crazy Land Daisuken, or Thump Thump Amusement Park Crazy Land Tactics. I'll just refer to it as Thump Thump. As far as I can tell, the only difference between this and Trolls is that here you play as a kid in a baseball helmet that kicks soccer balls. Makes sense to me. I gotta be honest, I know very little about the troll dolls that this game is based on other than they were naked and had colorful hair. Wikipedia tells me that they were sold in the US all the way back in the 1960s. Wild. In my youth, they were pretty popular, but apparently not enough for us to get an official Trolls NES game released here in the States. Did we miss out on anything interesting? Let's find out. So the plot is the usual bad guy stole your girl and you gotta go save her. It's actually a little weirder than that though, as your troll character is watching a movie of his girlfriend walking by, and then when she gets nabbed, he hops into the picture to save her. All right. The whole thing then takes place in this Disney-esque amusement park, complete with clowns, pirates, and, um, dalsums? Each stage is a different theme, broken up with some minecart-style auto-scrolling, and the spooky levels where the screen shakes awkwardly for some reason. The oddest thing to me about the design is that there's no information anywhere on the screen. No time, or points, or lives, or health bar. Just a big open picture of, well, great big blocks of solid colors. The troll sprite is, man, not much to look at. I get it, the toy trolls are just naked creatures with some wild hair, so what can you really do with that in terms of designing a sprite? But come on. I will say though, I love this animation when you duck, looking like he's joined Troll CrossFit and he's power squatting his way to gains. The action here is pretty slow. Enemies take multiple hits to kill, and the ball weapon is not only a little hard to accurately aim, but there's a lengthy reload period between shots. You can fire it at angles and directly above you like you're attempting a bicycle kick, but I never seem to need either of those options. You can pick up this bird who works like the fairy in Adventure Island or Beat in Mega Man 5, where he just attacks everything on screen for a limited time. Love it. The most interesting thing about the combat is that when you get hit, your weapon improves. So at full health, you're blasting this tapioca spitball, but when you take damage, suddenly you've got a split shot, followed by a fireball, and finally a split shot fireball when you're close to death. It's kind of a neat mechanic you don't see in a lot of 8-bit titles, where instead of the game getting harder as you get weaker, you actually become more competitive the worse you play. The platforming though, woof. <laughs> There's the typical frustrations of slippery edges and enemies that are placed to knock you back into pits, but mostly the issues with your jumping arc. This is the only game I can think of where your character jumps higher than it does farther. Most any NES game you play, your guy will leap up as much as they do left or right, with varying degrees of control. In Trolls, you jump so high, just scraping the treetops, and this in turn gives you a false confidence that you can easily cross even the most modest of gaps. But no. So many times you'll find yourself floating helplessly above the abyss with no way to turn around and no momentum to carry you across. Also, while you can hold A for a higher jump, again, it won't make you travel any further, and sometimes it won't work at all. Womp womp. And at first, the game is so comically easy that you won't care how awkward the platforming is, but as the levels go on, man, they are working up to dark man levels of frustration. Like this part, for instance. If you jump too quickly, these, um, whatever these are, will knock you back. If you jump too high, you hit your head on the ceiling and fall. If you jump too low, you'll miss the ledge completely. And of course, if you get within a troll's length from the edge of the platform, you'll just comically slide right to your death. This is the real deal right here. 
The Trolls in Crazy Land was made by one of my favorite developers, Kid, who I've discussed a number of times on this channel. They're kind of like the Konami of deep cuts, with interesting titles like Kickmaster, Low G-Man, Isolated Warrior, and more. They have kind of a distinct look and color palette with their games, featuring bizarre massive boss fights and a ton of purples, greens, and blues. Playing through Trolls, I would have never guessed this was one of theirs, as at first it lacks all the cool design details and rad color schemes, but as the game progresses, you start to see their aesthetic shine through more and more. There are some good things about Trolls in Crazy Land. The music is pretty great, upbeat, but then super tense once the boss battles start. The enemy sprites are really clever, like these blob monsters who rise from the raindrops, the gangsters that have to reload between shots, and these moles that look around for a bit before rocketing themselves up and then back into their holes. Best of all are the bosses, which feature some incredible sprite design and some really unique patterns that take some skill to master. If the whole game were just these fights, this would be a top 50 NES game contender, but sadly this is merely the soft center of a 50 layer jawbreaker. The platform is just so unfortunately broken at parts, which coupled with the incredibly tedious enemy fights, make playing Trolls a total chore. While we're on the subject, there was another Trolls game available for the NES, this time an unlicensed title released by American Video Entertainment. I actually do not own this one, but take a look at the gameplay and you'll see I'm not missing much. Yep, that is a game. The only thing that struck me with this Arkanoid ripoff was that it says press up or down, never left or right, meaning yeah, you only need to press those directions to play. What happens when you try the other directions? A series of pleading messages begging you to stop. That's pretty funny. Huge shout out to Child of Cascadia who has joined the Patreon and for whom I've drawn a Crystalis inspired tribute. Thanks so much. If you like my channel, I'm making weekly bonus videos over at patreon.com slash words. Your support goes a long way toward my ever hopeful dream of one day doing this YouTube thing part time. So if you're feeling generous and a little bored, go check it out. Until next time, thanks for watching.